Computers are amazing things. With CPU, RAM, and storage, they can run all kinds of different types of programs. But the challenge we run into with any computer is that this one computer could have lots of different programs on it. Any one of us has probably run a computer where we're running a web browser and a game and all kinds of things simultaneously. So there's something behind the scenes that's kind of acting like a conductor telling us who's running at any given moment. So we also have files that are stored on the system. We have all of these things going on. So what we need is kind of like a program to run all the programs. And that's basically what an operating system does for us. So in this episode, what I want to talk about is what really is an operating system and what are some of the jobs that it does. So when we're talking about operating systems, the number one big thing we talk about is what we call the kernel built into every operating system. And by the way, when we say operating systems, I'm talking about operating systems. Maybe you've heard of Microsoft Windows or Mac OS or Android or Linux. All of these are designed to do all this. In this particular example, I'm going to be using Windows, but I could have done this easily with any other operating system. So it all starts with the kernel. The kernel is the core part of the operating system that handles the primary memory management. If somebody wants to start a program, it's the kernel that decides where is that program going to sit in your RAM, how often will it run, all of that type of stuff. When we run a program, it goes from the hard drive and it then comes on to RAM, or what we actually call memory at that point. So memory is RAM. Did you get the reference? Anyway, so what I want us to do is let's take a quick look on, I've got a Windows 10 up and running here. And remember, when a program starts to run, we call it a process. So let's take a look up here on the screen. Now I'm running a program built into Windows called Resource Monitor. Every operating system has a tool similar to this. And I want you to look right here. Do you see PID? That stands for Process ID. Every single program that's running in memory right now gets its own unique process ID. Now, I want you to take a look at this on this Windows system. Look how many processes are running right now on my computer. There's a ton of them running, and that's pretty typical on today's systems. Now, you might look at that and go, well, I don't see a web browser open. It doesn't look like Mike's playing a game or running a Word document. That's because there's all kinds of underlying programs that are doing all kinds of important work for us. So the kernel's job is to act as a conductor and keep all of these guys running in a fashion that nobody's stomping on each other and it's running absolutely great. Over the years, different types of CPUs have been needing to run more and more memory. The original IBM PC way back in 1979 could handle a whopping, you ready? 640,000 bytes of memory. Today, even my phones are going to have eight gigabytes of memory in them. So there's been a need over the years for more and more programs to be running simultaneously. And in order to do this, built into every CPU is the ability to address memory. And in order to address memory, if you take a look at the bottom of a CPU, there's nothing on the bottom of that thing but a bunch of wires. So what they do is they dedicate a certain number of wires just to be able to talk to the memory. In the old days, it was eight bits. Then for a while, it was 16 bits. For a number of years, it was 32 bits. And today, it's 64 bits. These are really, really important values. The idea behind an operating system is it knows exactly how to talk to a particular type of CPU. And if the CPUs went from the ability to talk to 32 bits worth of memory up to 64 bits worth of memory, we had to redesign operating systems to be able to handle that. And you'll see that even today, although it's fading out quite quickly, you could get a 32-bit version of Windows and a 64-bit version of Windows, a 32-bit version of Linux and a 64-bit version of Linux. And you had to know, based on whatever CPUs in your computer, which operating system for you to get. Pretty much everybody's, almost everybody's 64-bit today, so this is much less of an issue than it used to be. Now, it's really important that when you're looking at software, you have to make sure that that software is designed to run with whatever operating system you might be having at any given moment. Luckily for us, most 64-bit operating systems, those for example, 64-bit Windows 10, can run both 64-bit versions of Microsoft Word 
And if you still have one laying around, 32-bit versions of Microsoft Word. So software compatibility is always a big issue. If you're running a 32-bit version of Windows, don't even think about trying to install a 64-bit version of Word. Not going to happen. It'll just give you an error. It'll just plain old stop. So dealing with memory is a big job of the operating system, and that's what the kernel's all about. The second big thing we're going to see with an operating system is dealing with hardware. Now, obviously, this computer is going to be doing a lot of input-output, so it needs to know how to talk to the keyboard. It needs to know how to talk to the mouse. It needs to know how to output to the monitor. So all of these devices together have to work and have to be able to speak the language of the operating system and vice versa. And that's where we get into something called device drivers. Every different operating system has to have its own device drivers for any given piece of hardware. Now if we take a look back up on this Windows system here, and what we're looking at here is Device Manager, which shows all the device drivers on a Windows system. And again folks, just because I'm doing this in Windows, you can do this with any operating system. So if we take a look at this, for example, uh, network adapters. So you'll see that I've got some uh, network card in here and a bunch of built-in stuff that comes with uh, the system. What else, do I have any mice? Yep, I got some mice in here. How many keyboards do I have? I got three keyboards. Okay, I don't really have three keyboards. What's happening here is that Windows allows me to do virtualized keyboards and some fun stuff like that, so it adds a few extra device drivers in there. So device drivers are software, they're programs that are stored on the hard drive, and when the operating system boots up, those device drivers act as the interface between my hardware devices and the operating system itself. So every different operating system is going to have its own set of device drivers. So if these device drivers are working, well, now we get good input and output. It's the way we communicate with our keyboards, our mice, our printers, whatever it might be. And that's where it really comes into play in terms of how we deal with all of these different devices. Next one is going to be storage. Now, if we take a look on my system over here, here I am in what we call File Explorer in Windows. And again, every operating system has a tool like this. I can actually look on the drives, and you can see I'm looking on my drives, and I can go in here. I don't have much on this particular system. You see it's pretty empty right now. But this is a hierarchical organization of the storage of my hard drive itself. Every operating system stores data, be it programs or real data, as folders or files. There's no exception to that. And part of the fun of learning new operating systems is getting used to their hierarchical structure of how they store different types of stuff. The fifth thing I want to mention is networking. A billion years ago, if you bought an operating system, you had to install networking as a separate third-party tool. It hasn't been that way in a long, long time. So let's take a look here on my Windows system one more time. And in this case, what I'm showing you is the interface for the networking, which is built into Windows. So I can set up a network connection if I want to. I can take a look at my current interfaces. Right now I've got an Ethernet, whatever that is. It's a networking card built in. And this is something called virtualization. I've got a great episode on that, which you can watch. Man, that was a lot of stuff in a tiny little bit of an episode, huh? If you feel like you've got a little bit of a heavy load there, don't worry about it. We're going to be going through lots and lots of this stuff in much greater detail as we drill down to understand what really is an operating system.